going on holiday? Yay! <laughs> Come on, you can go out Yay! Well done. That was brilliant. You can have a treat at the airport now. We are, in fact... <laughs> no. We are going on holiday, indeed. Um, for the first time in five and a half years. So, my smallest child was one when we last went on holiday abroad. You mean me? I do mean you. There isn't an extra child hiding anywhere, is there? No. Smaller yes. than you. Yes. I'm going to vlog the whole thing because um, I've got that sort of weird sense of nervousness that I get before I arrive somewhere that I've booked. I don't know whether anyone else gets this where you're thinking, oh my God, what's it going to be like? Never been there before. What's the house going to be like? What if you get there and it's just awful and not what you expected? So I've got those jitters. Um, hopefully it's going to be amazing. But I thought I would take you along for the ride. The kids are keeping themselves occupied with the Sky Kids app on iPad and iPhone back there, which is a rare treat for them. But it's a kind of boring leg of the journey, this. So it's keeping them occupied. Now, you've probably heard of Sky Kids. Maybe you've got Sky Kids at home, you've got the Sky Kids channel, but have you downloaded the Sky Kids app? You, am I boring you? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the, play, not the place to be filming, is it? Sky Kids app. Let me just let this plane go over. Why do I find the noisiest places to film? It's like a... It's like a real talent of mine. Now you've probably heard of Sky Kids. You might have the Sky Kids channel, but if you haven't got used, downloaded the Sky Kids app, then you are massively missing a trick. If you are on the go, if you're traveling, if it's raining outside, if you're tearing your hair out, trying to find things for the kids to do over the holidays, and you just need that 10 minutes That's of peace. Game. Then there's games. There's over 10,000 episodes of kids' content. There are drawing tutorials. We've got Drawing with Will going on in the back. There are loads of games, hundreds of games and quizzes. And some of them are actually stealth learning. So they are actually learning something, but they think they're just getting a treat. They love it. We love it because we know that the content is going to be age appropriate and it's going to be relevant to them. You can set their age profiles in the Sky Kids app and it just gives us a little bit of a breather when they're saying I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored over and over and over again. It's just a brilliant fallback. And um, one of the best things, and I didn't know yeah. this until recently, is that if you're with Sky Mobile, which you should be, by the way, because the benefits are incredible, you can enjoy Sky Kids app and stream for hours in the UK without using your data. It's so, so easy to set up. Just download it, log in, on cue. And you have endless things to keep the kids entertained whilst you film videos and have to stop each time a plane goes over when you're parked at an airport. Onwards to the terminal. My European. We are on an island called Lefkada. Here is a map of Lefkada. Here is a little plan of the town. And we flew in to Provisa, which is the tiniest airport. Now, I hadn't heard of Lefkada before. I basically booked it on the villa, which is never a good idea. Uh, but that's what I did at Christmas in a fit of being sort of depressed about the weather and thinking, God, we haven't been away abroad as a family for five odd years. Um, I'm going to pick somewhere. And that's what I did. So I saw the villa. I thought that looks lovely. And then I thought Lefkada, don't know anything about it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, it is, it's really, it's actually very beautiful. It feels really lovely and unspoilt. And it's not overly crowded and touristy. It feels a bit like the places that I've been to on mainland Greece, for example, like the Pelion Peninsula and like the, um, what are they called? Peloponnese. In that it still feels very Greek and it feels like parts of Greece did maybe 20 years ago. Um, so it's lovely, very rural, a lot quieter than lots of the 
very touristy, the usual suspects, tourist places. It's not a massive island. You can, oh God, I'm not gonna, I am, I'm gonna do it, aren't I? I'm gonna unfurl this map. Um, you can drive from here to here in about 20 minutes. And I reckon you can do the whole length of the island in about, I'm gonna say like an hour and 20 minutes, maybe. And if I was, if I was gonna come as an adult without kids, I would be heading down to this end of the island personally. So all of this coast, the east coast, has got better beaches for kids. They're sort of rockier, but shallower um, and, and gentle. Um, and all this side is a bit more dramatic. So it might be a bit more effort to get to the beach, for example. And the water can be suddenly deeper, but it's much more beautiful, I think, personally. And there are some beaches down here like Porto Katsiki and Agremni Beach. Um, they're a bit more effort to get to, but they are just stunning. Yeah. I've been to Lidl and I thought you might like see what we bought. Where's the lens on this? Um, don't normally shop at Lidl because there's not one really that near us. However, uh, my parents never stop banging on about Lidl and how good it is. So they're going to be overjoyed that we've finally been to Lidl. What did we get? Let's have a look. Oh, this is it's going to be scintillating, honestly. Oh, we bought a melon that is, I reckon, probably the exact size and weight of a human head. Look at this, hold on. I found that quite interesting, really, because I thought, you know what, if... If you weren't going to carry a human head around, not attached to anything, this is about, surely a human head cannot weigh this much, actually, it weighs a ton. Um, if you're ever going to, you know, mooch around with one on your shoulder, for example, it's good to know how much it would weigh. Massive, brilliant garlic. Do you not find in England that garlic is really small and the cloves are really small and it just takes ages to peel them and they're really annoying. This garlic is the dream, I'm telling you. I have to say, this isn't, isn't my first rodeo at the uh, Lidl in Lefkada town. So that's how I knew that the garlics were big. We've got some eggs, the staple. So basically what's been happening is that we've been taking the kids out to eat and pretty much every time it's just been a nightmare. They don't want to eat anything, they'll try it, but it's just not familiar and we've ended up just spending it even with pizza and the pizza was nice, it was fine. Um, it's just kids, isn't it? We have ended up just spending a load of money every single day on food that doesn't get eaten. So we end up finishing it off and we don't really want it because we've already had what we've eaten. And even just buying the bare minimum in the restaurant has just been too much and it's just felt really wasteful. So we've gone back to the supermarket, even though I didn't want to have to really cook on holiday or do anything at all. Um, we've gone back and we've stocked up. So we're probably going to eat out only a couple more times, really, and the rest of the time we'll just be here. This juice is amazing. I'm showing you all this. Pretty sure you won't be able to get it in the UK, but there we go. It's a mixture of grapefruit, orange, and apple. No bits. I don't like bits either. Kids don't like bits. I don't like bits. And probably no fruit has ever gone near it, but there we go. Tonic, because we're gonna have some gins. Tin tomatoes, because I'm gonna make that, that um, viral TikTok recipe, finally, with the feta and the pasta. Um, no doubt it's gonna be disgusting, but there we go when in Rome or when in Greece um, and you've got some feta lying around in the fridge that isn't going to be eaten otherwise. Most important purchase of all, the Coca-Cola. Still haven't weaned myself off and I'm on holiday. So why would I wean myself off it now? It would make no sense. The other day I made the best burgers. I just looked up online a burger recipe and the first one that came up was Gordon Ramsay. And basically, it was just like, just put your mince in a bowl, season it, and then shape it into patties. It's like, really? What, nothing else? No. 
Um, and so I made them. And weren't they the best burger that you'd ever had? Yeah. Not the best burger he'd ever had. I'm lying about that. But he did say it was the best thing he'd eaten since we got to Greece. I would say the best thing I've eaten since we got to Greece was the um, deep fried feta that was wrapped in pastry and then had honey and sesame seeds all over it, which I will be dreaming about for years and years. Apples, obviously, a staple of my diet along with magnums and cokes. Almond croissants, normal croissants from the bakery, um, more mints, some grapes and some burger buns because i'm going to make burgers again soon so they were so good so that's what we got from the, the, the uh, that's what we got from the little shop um i hope that's been interesting every single person now apart from me has had a stomach bug i just feel like i'm condemned and i'm waiting for it to happen finished being ill on the ferry thought we were going to miss it mainly because the clock in the car is 12 minutes fast that I've just realized and um, we've got plenty of time in fact I cannot believe how many um, cars and vans and coaches have packed onto this ferry we haven't booked I don't know whether you can even book but I think we're gonna be the last car on oh my god <laughs> I am so glad that that is Rich and not me having to park that car. Like five ferrymen really stressfully shouting at you. No, thank you. done Meganisi um, and we've ended up at the number one attraction. So would I come here again? I don't know. It's not like I'm down on it. I think it's I think it's a great place and you can get a ferry to Kefalonia, you can get a ferry to Meganisi, which we did yesterday, but again we got to Meganisi and like what is there to do with a six and an eight year old? They're not interested in harbours, really, or, I don't know, walking around looking at churches or buildings or looking at the scenery. Um, I don't know, just think it was a bit of an oversight on my part, really, the whole thing. I think next time we are going to bite the bullet and go somewhere with a kids club or like a water park or, I don't know, some kind of all-inclusive place where they are just entertained because i think if they're entertained then it takes the pressure off you and you can actually relax whereas if you're constantly trying to think about the next thing that you've got to do um it's not relaxing you know what i mean entire amazing island um, yet we've set up camp basically on a piece of waste ground with the bin behind us and um, some rubbish floating around in, in a sewage outlet pipe and the reason that we're here is because there's a on water um, obstacle course or what you call it it's a knockout type thing and that's where they want to be so that is where we are <laughs> it's quite funny where did you spend the day next to a bin and some rubbish sewage pipe some flies 
literally squashed in with the next people along. Just, I reckon 80 centimetres between my sun lounger and their massive extended family reunion that's happening. Um, yeah. to show you what I bought with me on holiday to wear because I was really proud of myself. Just break my neck then. Um, I didn't overpack at all. That was my, those aren't even mine. That was for traveling in. That's my Loop Cashmere Coatigan, which is amazing. I'm about to order another one because it's a sale on. Um, it's so good, it's so handy and it looks really chic. So let's ignore that. But apart from those, I had this which is my Hayley Menzies silk dress, which just rolls up really small, so it's brilliant for traveling in, and it stays, keeps you quite cool, um, really, because there's not much to it, and I love that it's a big, vibrant pattern. Amazing yellow dress from Iris Fashion, which is a really full skirted, I'm not wearing any bottoms, <laughs> really full skirted cotton dress again favoring the natural materials natural fabrics this is a really old hush maxi dress with like a what do you call that at the top smocked whatever it is bodice um, which means it does hold your boobs a little bit and it doesn't fall down so you could wear it strapless if you wanted to um, and it's just a really casual easy beach kind of dress I've had that for years this is from me and m and it's a cheesecloth maxi dress and it's got a cut out at the back it's really chic and i found that really useful this again is hush it's a really old t-shirt dress i've worn that loads this was just what i traveled in which is a like a shirt dress but it's really nicely shaped and it's tapered at the back so it's a bit longer and it looks really stylish and chic and then this is an old kaftan from um, kaftan style, I suppose, dress, cotton dress from Hush again. And that is, oh no, so the whole point of this segment of the video was to show you the thing that I've worn pretty much every single day, about 10 times more than anything else, which is this slub dress, can't even see what brand it's from, in bright fuchsia pink and it's got this racer back and I've just found it really really useful looks like it's by ATM don't know got it off the outlet along with my bikinis so the bikinis that I've worn the whole time that I've been here are these ones from I don't know whether it's called on onia or onia o-n-i-a so I've got um the navy one I've got these bottoms, um, but they didn't have a matching top, but I really love the print. So I've been mixing and matching it all. And then I have got the original one that I bought, which is the red print. Um, but that one's got high-waisted bikini bottoms. Now, look, I've got nothing against high-waisted bikini bottoms. I think it's brilliant. They're, they're a really nice shape and it's really flattering and it looks really sort of chic and fashionable. However, when it's boiling hot and you're lying on a sun lounger, the last thing you want is extra fabric across your body. And so I'm glad that I've had a couple of little, just ordinary bikini bottom options. Shoe of the fortnight. These rubbery Birkenstock, I think they're called Arizonas. They are incredible. If you need a sandal that is waterproof, um, but also very comfortable and also very sort of capable. So you know when sometimes a beach access is down the side of a cliff or whatever and it's just a little bit more difficult to get to and flip-flops do not cut it. These are amazing. The footbed is kind of shaped. I don't know whether all Birkin... I've never had Birkenstocks before. I'm now a convert. But it's sort of shaped so that your feet can't slip out of the sandal. 
They're so lightweight. Um, I've just, I haven't stopped wearing them and I haven't stopped boring everybody about how good they are. So if you're looking for some beach shoes, I mean, I don't know whether I'd wear these sort of in town or something like that. They definitely feel like they're holiday, beachy type, pool slidery category. Um, but for that, oh my God, they're worth their weight in gold. My husband, on the other hand, has not unpacked his bag at all for the last two weeks. He just lives in the same pair of shorts and the same pair of flip flops. He literally could have just bought those things in his travel bag and he would have been fine. We're off for our final dinner and it's at a place that I have cancelled, booked and cancelled three times already. So this is fourth time lucky because we just all kept getting ill. Uh, it's right up in the mountains, about as high as you can go and it has the most amazing view apparently uh, off the west coast. Now ideally you'd go there for sunset but you cannot get a table at sunset for love nor money. I don't know how far in advance people book this place, but it must be months because I've been trying since we got here. Anyway, we're going for dinner at a very Greek time of 5 p.m., which is probably about five hours before people in Greece would, um, would ever go for their dinner. That's the only table I could get. So that's where we're off to. And then tomorrow we go home. I was going to ask everybody what they think the best thing on Lefkada is. Like it can be a place, it can be a beach. What What's the best thing, do you think? The Huggy Wuggy shop? The Huggy Wuggy shop? Yeah. Okay, what, what about you, what do you think? beach with the steps um the really the one with the really deep waves massive waves yeah, yeah that was good wasn't it yes going to Lidl <laughs> going to Lidl we spent a lot of time going to Lidl didn't we and what have we said for our next summer holiday if we ever go on a summer holiday Hotel. again it's been decided that kids they want kids clubs oh no look this is going to fall off I knew this was going to happen stupid car breeze it has been decided, almost unanimously, that it would be nice just once to try one of these places that has the kids club and it's all inclusive and they can have drinks whenever they want and ice cream whenever they want and just eat chips to their heart's content. That is it. That's a wrap. Lefkada 2023, is it? Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about return of vlogging, if you think I should, or if it will just spell disaster. Um, let me know in the comments below. And if you want any more info about sort of where we stayed, where we went, let me know. I might do a blog post if I get a chance and yeah thanks for watching and see you oh make sure you check out the sky kids app because it is genuinely brilliant and a complete lifesaver over the summer holidays if you've got those moments where you just think oh my god they're going to drive me potty you're in the car on your way to somewhere far flung up the country or down the country um oh my goodness It is an absolute godsend and I'll put more info below on that one as well. So see you next time.